What's up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Cannon Fodder. Welcome to City Skylines, where we're doing a one road challenge. What does that mean? It means that we're going to build a city with one road in and out. So it is a two-way road, but there is only one. No crossroads whatsoever. I'm not entirely sure what the rules of this challenge are, because it wasn't really properly explained in any of the videos that I watched, or even on the Steam posts. But I'm fairly certain that using the traffic manager here, as I do to modify where the lanes are directed, as well as putting in a U-turn for our city utilities and city services, i.e. our garbage trucks, to do a bit of a U-turn is possibly a bit of a cheap move, but we're going to put our own spin on this challenge, so stay tuned to see what happens. Anyway, jumping into our city expansion, laying out our roads in a bit of a snake pattern, really. It's like basically playing the game of snake, zoning up our industry, our residential, but not, of course, forgetting our water services. So we're going to start off with a water tower and your standard outlet. Uh, our pipes start off really nice here, but it quickly devolves into a horrible, shitty mess. Uh, we do start off with a coal power plant now. We do have to hook everything up using power lines. Uh, but now I think we're going to run the game. Nope, zoning still. We haven't, haven't done that yet. Wow. Okay. So commercial... Uh, residential and of course making sure that our commercial and residential are separated with a decent gap. Not sure why I wave at that gap because we will fill it in later but there, there goes our industry. More commercial coming in just laying everything out nice and neatly. I think we're bringing our uh, what is it? Residential, just a little bit too close there. I can't remember, but we'll we'll find out. Dropping our budget all the way down so we can make a little bit of money so we don't go broke immediately. Not entirely sure why I do that or why they've decided to start growing at the the other end, basically. Uh, they have a funny habit of, of starting to build where there isn't really anything. So no power, no utilities, but we hook that up with a power pole, which we do get to delete later. I'm very much looking forward to that. Shortcut, uh, and we get ourselves a little hamlet, obviously. For those of you who have played City Skylines before, you know that there are smaller milestones, achievements, if you will, in-game achievements that gradually unlock some stuff here. I felt it was important for this that we sort of, we grow our city. Another cut in there as we decide we're going to remove some of the commercial. I think it's just a little bit too close to that power plant. I don't want to get any sick citizens in our business. Raising our taxes to get a little bit of money. 12% I find is the sweet spot. And there it is, raising the budget on our power yet again, because the less money you throw at it, the less power it generates, and vice versa. Uh, that will gradually increase until we hit 105% or something. Anyway, Worthy Village just fires, and I believe that may be the last one we see. But it is time to enact step one of our plan to make this city just a little bit more livable on its one road. This is something that I saw another content creator do. He's a little bit more popular like me. He's another Australian by the name of Flabaliki. Uh, when he did this, he, and this is where I got this idea from, put in crosswalks everywhere and another thing which we will show you later on when we get access to it. But crosswalks, crosswalks are immensely helpful. So rather than your citizens having to walk all the way down the length of the street, you can uh, just cross over the road. Anyway, Tiny Town has fired, and that gives us access to a few more things. That wasn't the last milestone we see. We think about messing around with our garbage budget, but let's be honest, it's all one road, and they have difficulty as it is anyway. So power of water, all good there. We decide we're going to look at some education. We're going to get ourselves a bit of... Uh, so what is that, an elementary school in and a public library because books are good, guys. Now, we do have to be careful here as I did do in a test playthrough. I kind of messed up a future part of this that happens later on in the vid uh, by placing my public libraries and schools in some rather inopportune places, putting down in some city services. We thought we already had a fire station in, um, so we do go back and have a bit of a look at that. Again, looking at the power once more. Again, like, yeah, see, 105% right there. Again, not sure why I put pump that down very all the way down. It's like fire station. Thought we already had one. Nope, police station. Ah, uh, past wombat is a bit of a derp. Anyway, looking at everything, and it is now time. Yes, putting in footpaths. This is again something uh, inspiration inspired by Flavaliki, or uh, you might even say just a straight up copy because I thought it was such a good idea. Uh, just. Providing alternate methods of transport, what better way than using Shank's Pony? Looking at our power again, just quickly, but deciding that it may be time for some 
parks. Uh, not parks, car parks. They're still parks. They still have the same effect in the game. It is a rather handy thing, and our, our citizens do use them. But with those in, we do go back to our parks, and we do put in uh, a couple a couple small parks around just to sort of start getting our our citizens to a little bit more happy, I guess you could say. So happiness, sort of placing them in uh, in strategically, or at least attempt to place them in strategically, where they'll have the greatest area of effect. I actually think that even if I've... So I go back and just check to see, like, when the stuff is covered. Yes, it is. I thought I missed that spot, but no, it is It is definitely covered. Uh, and then we go back through, and we start placing down uh, bike paths as well. Bikes are obviously uh, a rather fun way and very healthy way of getting around wherever it is that you live if your city has indeed catered for such things. So we're just going to cut to another part of our expansion with Boomtown firing. We're going to put down a just a garbage dump because our recycling plants weren't really coping all that much. This is going to be primarily an industrial expansion with the garbage trucks flowing out, just cleaning that up a little bit longer, putting in some more crosswalks to help with uh, people moving around and again, getting ready to put down some more paths because yes, we want to make sure that people are walking everywhere if they decide not to take the cars. Because let's be honest, in a city that only has one road, driving is going to take you a very long time. Uh, our power plants are not happy. There's a good reason for that. Uh, the coverage for our recycling centers and our garbage trucks may have a little trouble getting to those areas. So if you do want to try this out for yourself, uh, while it is handy to have your power plants right at the very start of your city, garbage processing might have some issues. And anyway, we decide we need to educate our citizens some more after seeing the complaint from our businesses, placing down another elementary school and not realizing it until, well, now. We go, oh, wait, what? Uh, because we thought we'd place down the Institute of Creative Arts because the actual high school there is huge and we don't really have any space for it. So there is that. Uh, and obviously just getting ready to place some more, some more stuff down. We've got some water problems as well. So fixing that up. Uh, eventually we do get rid of our water tower going for another water inlet pipe and some more sewage outlets like this one here. Moving on. Just taking out our little uh, little tweet thing, looking at garbage again and going, hmm, yeah, maybe it wasn't such a great idea to play that. Anyway, this bit has been included because I want to just note it was not necessarily difficult, but did present a small challenge in placing some of these roads down. Obviously, we are on one side of a riverbank with a whole other side available to us when we get to that. And believe me, we do get to it, but it was interesting to try and judge the distance between, or at least, like how much space we had to place roads. So we've got one road placed there, sort of like an end point, to try and figure out, you know, how much space we had and to try and, I guess, really space things out properly. We did it really poorly there and I really should have replaced that road, but obviously didn't. It's, yeah, it's there. Uh, and then coming in and messing around with uh, one of our mods in a second here, called move it mod just to sort of make that curve a little bit less odd I guess you could say it still looks weird and as I do later on I just sort of I just build straight roads straight up to the the beach and then curve it around and it just brings the landscape up to where we are this is gonna be another industrial expansion which to be honest don't really need it we look at our uh, complaints and go oh maybe we shouldn't build more industrial we need more commercial and Obviously, a whole load more residential, but we take a break from zoning to just put down some more paths, much to the annoyance of our citizens. Uh, it's like, hi, we're the government. We need to put down a path. Your house is in the way. Goodbye. Anyway, this is this was another thing that I'd planned for, was actually the placement of a central city park to run the length of that lovely gap between the first half of our city and the second half of our city. It is worth noting this is the this will be the only connection from one half to the other. In fact, there ends up being three parts to our city, with this main park, Chester Park, being the only way that our citizens can move from one part to the other. 
costing them a fortune and making us a tidy sum of money, which we will see at the end. And we will basically start placing down our park entrances and exits, deleting paths where we see fit and putting down some more entrances as well. Uh, just coming in and going, hmm, we need to bring our park a little bit closer to the road so we can uh, give our citizens access to this this wonderful, wonderfully beneficial thing that we are building essentially for them, but let's be honest, mostly for us. This thing generates us a phenomenal amount of money. And we're going to get quirky with the paths here in a second. Decide to just plain paths, nothing fancy like um, the other ones as well, just just a plain, plain path with no trees. Hooking it all up, getting it all set up. And it, it pretty much, I guess, it, I think it upgrades... Pretty much instantly, the minute we sort of open it, uh, we start placing stuff in and it just, bam, three stars off the bat. Uh, so what are we going for? Should we just mess with the pricing for a little bit? Like I said, it's already paying for itself more than enough, like 176 coins, and it's generating an income of over 2,000. So it's definitely paying for itself already. These things do tend to be a touch expensive. There it is. That's our first upgrade. In goes the chessboard. In goes... Toilets and park info booths and all manner of fun things. We do spend a little bit of time here trying to figure out where to place the toilets just to make sure that we have, well, what I would consider decent coverage. Um, we do put a little sort of eatery area across from the cafe uh, later on. It's not shown on camera, but I spent a little bit of time on it. It looks okay. And then I decided that, you know what a park really needs? A crap load of trees. We do try and put some variation in there, but it doesn't really work out all that well, to be honest. It really doesn't work out all that well at all. And then, of course, it is back to expanding our city. Uh, not entirely sure what I'm doing here. Oh, yeah, we need more commercial because that's one of the key complaints from our industry is not enough buyers. Um, we do take a look. There is a bit of a spoiler for later on. Uh, we do decide that it is now time, of course, to... Ban parking on the side. Not entirely sure why I do that, because the road we use later on bans it anyway. But maybe we're just setting up. Maybe it's everything just looks too busy. We want people to actually start using those car parks. We do put in a few more here and there. Uh, some of the reasoning that I used for placing these car parks was like, so we got one near the main park entrance. We'll have parks near, or sorry, car parks in high commercial areas, busy industrial areas next to the crematorium next to a couple of the cemeteries as well. So there's places where I felt like a car park would probably be needed in real life. Like most of these places will have car parks in them anyway. But yeah, we care about our citizens. Kind of. So I felt, you know, why not place some more? All right, back to, more, back to some more city expansion. This is the third part of our city. Again, noting that the only way to access this place by foot will be through our main city park. Why? Because I'm evil like that. And let's be honest, money in this game is always nice. Uh, you can see that our a little cash pile is slowly building up there. We're already at over 200,000 coin. I'm going to call it coin because you can't really call it anything else. You can try to call it simoleons, but it's that's another game, people. Deal with it. Anyway, that's our park side gate in. There's our connection. Note the lack of paths and bike paths to the rest of the city. Laying in, again, our beautifully laid out piping, which does become what I would consider a disaster if you start putting in angles and curves and what have you. And I just, you know, it's not great. And then the fun part. We get to upgrade all of our roads to two-way road with a bike path down either side. The beautiful thing about having a city with no crossroads is that you don't really need to be careful. You can just wave your mouse over the screen and watch as everything highlights blue. Ah, oh, glorious. All the blue. The added benefit of this is that there is now even more recourse for our citizens to use their uh, push bikes. Because as you'll see in a minute, we're going to enact a policy. But, um, so again, no cars on the side. People do actually use it. We do, I think, I think I show us zooming in on the people using it, but people are definitely using the footpaths and we're going to ban all the bikes on sidewalks. So they will only use bike paths 
as well as the um, bike lanes. I'm not sure if banning bikes also counts in your actual like park areas. So it's worth a bit of research. And then we decide we're done. We're done with our coal power plants. They've been good, uh, but they're now not really generating enough power at all. I mean, I could put down some more of those uh, wind and water turbines, but we decommission that and build a geothermal. Geothermals create twice the amount of energy that coal power plants do. Coal power plants coming in at 40 megawatts and geothermal at 80. We do end up building a second geothermal later on, again, decommissioning our other coal power plant there. Coming in, putting down some more city services, just getting in the big stuff. So a big hospital, big police station, a big fire station. It is, uh, what was I going to say there? Oh yeah, just placing in some more commercial because again, realizing that there is a little bit of commercial demand, not as much as our residential demand. So we're going to have to do a little bit more expanding and bumping up our taxes as well, dropping the price, dropping the amount of money that we're spending on power because we do actually have that geothermal in now and updating our water supply too. So just double checking as to where we should place these because uh, when your ground and your water is polluted, that does affect the drinking water of your citizens and does make them sick. So we're just going to check that quick. No, it's all fine. It's just outside. But where we're going to place the other one was a bit of a problem. Placing in some more power there as well, just for that building, because why not? We've got money to burn. New buildings going away and looking at some more of the policies, but deciding, nah, now is not the time to enact any of that. Again, coming in and putting down some more city services, another fire station, another police station, the big ones, as mentioned earlier, and then jumping in again to ban all the taxis uh, in a second. Yep, there it is. We've decided that is what we're going to do. We're going to ban all the taxis. And then I realized my mistake. We're going to ban all the cars. Now we have no traffic problems whatsoever because, well, you can't have traffic problems if you have a car. Anyway, we are nearing the end of our video. We sort of just built and built and built and let it expand. We actually end up with quite a tidy little nest egg and barely any demand whatsoever. If you want to see more of this kind of stuff, guys, let me know in the comments down below. This was a lot of fun to do and was all done live on Twitch as well as the editing of this video as well was all done live. So the link for that is also in the description. My name is Cannon Fodder. I'm a Wombat, and I will see you later. Thanks for tuning in.